Hello and welcome to this video on how I'm going to guide you through uh, constructing and converting uh, Mephiston for the Blood Angels. I'm going to use a little bit of help from this uh, Chaos Sorcerer as well um, and some of the tools we're going to be using. Uh, so I'm going to be using two types of glue. There's the uh, Revel glue that you saw there uh, which is kind of like thicker. Um, you know, It's more like a gel really and then there's the Tamiya Extra Thin which is uh, much more like water, it's very fluid. And a few other bits and pieces there as well. Uh, the two most important being the uh, the clippers and the scalpel. Um, so to start with, what I'm going to do is clip off his foot. So my plan for this model is it's going to be a display piece, and I want to do my own custom base for it. And because of that, I don't want the uh, the base that he comes with. Now the model's sculpted with uh, one foot as part of the uh, the base, uh, you know, that he would usually stand on. Uh, it's a bit of a pain, really because the, you know, the foot is really moulded on there, it's not just like um, something you could stick on or uh, just just the toes or anything like that, it's the whole foot, um, even the, the central part of the foot which has usually got like a, a gap where the arch would be, um, it's it's all like a solid piece of plastic. It's, it's not like the hardest work though, all you've got to do is just like I'm doing here, uh, take some clippers and clip all the way around it, you just got to be really careful that you don't actually cut any of the foot itself. So always, um, you know, check before you actually clip, and it's easy to say, but uh, what you'll find is, especially for this bottom bit, uh, this is the hardest part actually. When you're about to clip, you'll see it right in front of you that you've got it lined up properly, but you don't see behind for the rear blade. So when it starts to clip, quite often, and I've done this myself, is that it's not quite in line with. Um, you know, you're holding the, the blades at a slight angle, and you'll either clip the detail off, or you know, even cut right into uh, a piece of the the model that you don't want to damage. So, you know, just take your time with this. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no rush or anything like that. Um, also, keep in mind that while I'm doing this, I'm doing this as like a display standard. If when you're building models, you you don't care too much about things like mold lines or gaps or anything like that. It's perfectly fine, you know, if you just want to get your model on the table ready for gaming. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, you know, having all, you know, these little extra details on the model. Um, but for the case of this, for a display level piece, something that I could enter into a competition possibly, um, you really have to take your time and remove all of the these little kind of uh, mold defects if you like um some people view this as like you know one of the, the fun parts of the hobby the building uh, i actually really dislike this part uh you know it takes uh, quite a lot of time it's a bit fiddly and, and uh, i just want to get down to the painting you know that's my uh, my main passion with uh, uh games workshop models um i really enjoy the painting part so you know having to spend a long time building the models uh, you know it's not it's just a chore that I've got to get through basically but having said that just because I, I don't enjoy it that much you still have to spend the time um, for competition pieces to make sure they have a, a really good finish on so here's uh, one of my bugbears is um, mold lines that go through uh, details you can see on the, the back of the leg there uh, behind the knee there's the uh, the ribbing um, and obviously the line goes straight through it. it. They can be, it's even worse really when you have a, even finer ribbing you'll see later on on some of the, the tubes and pipes that they, they have the same issue. Now of course, you know, you, you don't really have an option with this. You're gonna get it, these uh, these lines going through them because they have to, the molds are in two parts. But um, what I'm using is just purely uh, a scalpel to clean it all off. Now there's all sorts of tools you can get. Um, I think Games Workshop even do a special scraper for it. Uh, I've tried using the scraper, it's actually really good, but the problem is that it doesn't have a really sharp, fine tip on it. Uh, and you can see here these little steps around the feet um, and small details like that, you can't get these tools into them. Um, and I've found really that a scalpel can do everything that you need to do for, for scraping off mold lines. Um, and one thing to also keep in mind is that you don't just have to use just the tip or, you know, the the sharp, the, you know, the, the pointy end. Uh, you can use the whole length of the blade because you actually get a little bit more control and you can put a bit more pressure on the uh, 
the blade closer to you and also what you find is because you tend to cut more with the the tip of the blade it's actually you get a, like a nice sharper bit of the blade a bit further back because it's used uh, a bit less um, you can see there as well there's all sorts of little bits of shavings and things we're going to get rid of that in a moment as well i have a little trick that i use to to get rid of all these things um like if you, I suppose if you're building an army, I know a few people people complain if you point out model lines or things like that on their armies. Uh, and really, unless somebody's asking for feedback, you shouldn't be, you know, criticizing people's work anyway. Um, but if people do ask for feedback on things, then I will point out uh, mold lines. Just because, from a you know, again with the aim of entering something into a competition, because it is something that will impact the the quality of the the work at the end. Um, Again, you can see here, just it's very simple. This uh, I will say, you have to be very gentle with how you apply it. Even more so if you've got a new blade. So the older the blade, um, the harder you have to push to get these things up, uh, you know, scrape the, the lines off. Um, but even with an old blade, still be very gentle, and also angle the blade slightly uh, backwards. So you're kind of like dragging it along. Don't push the blade. What will happen is if you push the blade against these things, it'll cut it, but it'll angle down and cut into the model. Whereas if you drag it, it just kind of like um, pulls on the uh, the surface and, and doesn't, you know, there's no cutting motion. Uh, but now you can see how I get rid of all the, the little extra um, defects and things. So this is what the, the Tamiya Extra Thin is for. Uh, it's really nice because it, one, it comes with a, um, a brush on the end, brush applicator, and it's got a very sharp point on it. And the glue obviously melts the plastic. Now, one, it can tidy up everything. So all these little tiny bits of uh, leftover debris plastic that you've scraped off. Um, so what happens is a lot of it comes off and you can just blow it away. But every now and then there's a piece that's kind of like not quite come off. Um, if you've got a stiff toothbrush, you can brush them all off as well. But I just find that having... You know, just going over all with the glue just melts it flattens it all down but also because of the the point on the brush um, and with it melting the uh, the plastic you can kind of sculpt it a little bit so when you get those sort of that line going through the ribs on the you know the ribbing on the back of the, the knee uh, cap there um, you can kind of drag the brush through it and it sort of melts the the mold line and kind of re-sculpts it a little bit as well um, Obviously, there's uh, there's mold lines all over the uh, the pieces on the model. Um, some of them are quite tricky. Uh, I always find things on fabric where it's going through creases and parts like that uh, a little bit tricky because uh, you can't just do a, a straight flat movement with the uh, the blade um, because you end up you know kind of like smoothing down the uh, the folds and things. And part of it is kind of like you almost end up re-sculpting parts of the model just very gently. Uh, what I would say as well is it's better to get rid of the mold line and soften down and smooth over some of the details than it is to leave the mold line. Because when it comes to the painting, you can always touch up or you know paint in any of the details that you've taken off. Now, that I mean, I say that, but you have obviously um, the, the painting has to be quite precise and detailed when you're doing that kind of thing um, and if you're just going to be say like dry brushing a model um, it won't dry brush quite as well because the the detail will be smoothed down however if you are dry brushing the model and it's got a mold line there the dry brushing will pick up the mold line a lot anyway so it's kind of like you know no win situation there um, the only thing is obviously it takes quite a bit longer you know cleaning everything up so if you just again try to do it for speed then obviously just leave the mold line um, you can see things like on the, the little um, horned skulls on the tips there, uh, they, they all have little tiny mold lines going around them, even on the, um, the neck guard thing that he has going around. Um, you can see there I was scraping off some bits, and the problem was there were little rivets all the way along it, so you have to stop between each little rivet when you, rather than being able to do it quickly in one smooth motion. Uh, so obviously you have to be careful doing those. Every now and then I'll get a piece like that and I'll get annoyed and I'll just cut off all the rivets and just leave it as a smooth surface. Uh, so you know that kind of thing is always an option. Don't be afraid to cut off detail if you can't be bothered to paint it later on. Um, but again, like the, the Tamiya glue will 
be a big help in all these situations where especially like where you have to come up to a like a little detail and stop quite a lot of times you're going to find that you've scraped the plastic and it doesn't quite flake away you can't just blow it away or whatever um because it's still attached to the model in tiny little sections and it, it's just a lot of work to clean all that up so that's why i just run the glue over it um, because it just melts it all all down you'll see again here as i apply it um, again uh, also like really useful in crevices and things anywhere where you can't work very easily like you could spend a lot of time with a, a scalpel cutting all these bits out and making it perfectly clean but if you can just run a bit of glue over it um, it does the same sort of work and it you know, kind of like softens all the like if you've been a little bit heavy handed with your scraping um, the glue will just again soften the detail so it'll hide your mistakes uh, for display level stuff again so I mentioned you know uh, mold lines are a bad thing uh, you just have to you have to look for all the the, the little sneaky mold lines that are all over the place um, and you can see here as well just under the armpit now again this would like for a gaming piece it wouldn't be worth um, spending the time on this now well, unless you're me of course because um, I get a little bit carried away and so for all the models I do I always take all the mold lines off but it's kind of almost like a uh, a built-in thing to me now um, the problem is as well it means that it takes me a long time to build any kind of army um, and that's part of the reason why I'm mostly a painter rather than a gamer but yeah a lot of these uh, mold lines um, like under the armpits and things uh, is only really worth cleaning them off if you're going to be doing display level stuff uh, this is the uh, one of the problems I was talking about earlier with the uh, the ribbing on tubes and pipes um, you have to be very very gentle when you're scraping these off because you're going to be taking off a lot of the detail and because these are so fine and detailed when it comes to painting them even just a kind of like gentle scraping can take off the detail enough that it's very hard to see what you've got to paint um, and this is definitely something as well that if you're dry brushing if you scrape it down too much then it's just going to end up as a smooth surface. You'll also find as well with uh, you know some of those little tubes and pipes and you know all like concave shapes and things. They're actually quite tricky to just drag your knife along because you always the angle is changing through the whole length of the movement. So you have to, again, take your time, do it very slowly, just so that you don't end up cutting into the model. On the sword here, you can see that little kind of tag where the uh, where it connected to the sprue. Now, the temptation is just to smooth along, like I'm doing here, you know, drag the blade along. But you have to make sure that you cut off that little tag first and get it as smooth as you can and then drag over the top of it. Because otherwise, it actually, kind of like, as you're shaving the... the levels layers off um, it c creates a sort of like a smooth bump every time you go over it and you know because it's quite hard to you know very pressure as you go along so that you make a perfectly even line it just it doesn't matter how many times you go over it the bump will still stay there it just gets lower and lower each time along with the rest of the blade getting lower and lower so you can shave the blade right down by smoothing over it like that but that bump will still be there um, here you can see one of the benefits though of the of using the scalpel for this uh, so I can go over the knuckles and the uh, the handle on the hilt the wrapping on it um, because these are nice big chunky details this uh, you know is perfect so again you could be very careful when you do it it's a, it's a very delicate touch when you're applying this don't press press hard you'll scrape the detail right off and you'll cut into the model and also you risk cutting yourself as well um, so the harder you press the more likely you are to slip or make a mistake and that's how you cut your fingers again using the, the Tamiya um, ultra thin what's it uh, extra thin sorry <laughs> um, then uh, you can see how it just like smooths over all the, the work that you've done you know just cleans it up makes it look tidy um, you know and makes it you know good for for painting on um, one of the worst parts on the model for tidying up are these little needles here you can see i've already bent them and i've barely touched them uh, but it was just as i was clipping them off the sprue i think i touched them slightly um, they're not actually bent too much you can see how the plastic is stressed 
where it goes white when you see little white parts on the plastic that's stressed and it means that it's already weakened uh, so I now have to be extra careful with these so that I don't snap them off uh, which also means for getting these mold lines off I now have to be super duper careful because well one I can knock them again uh, and which is more likely to break them but also I could easily cut them off as well it only takes a little bit of pressure to cut through them they're very very thin um, you can see on the, the back here as well you know, they've got the little loops going around the chain um, they all needed to have the, the mold line scraped off now you might think, you know, well, that's a waste of time, it's all that detail and things, you could easily damage it, why would you do that? But again, it's actually, when you look on the model when it's complete, um, you can see these where these mould lines would go quite clearly, uh, and they would be visible to judges, in, like in the Golden Demon competition. And If you're going to spend a long time painting a model, so on this I'll probably spend 50 hours or more painting this model, uh, then it's probably worth spending the time to tidy it up, because you know you want to present the model in the best possible light so here uh, you can see I'm just cleaning up the head as well I do actually end up cutting the uh, the tab off at the, the bottom so here I'm this is just a little bit of uh, excess and um, where the head connected to the sprue but you, if you can see next to it there's a little tab and this actually makes the head fit exactly in the position that the sculptor wanted when you put it together uh, I actually prefer a little bit more freedom with uh, when I place the, the heads on the model so I just cut the tabs off all the time so if you're familiar with uh, Space Marines in general I think nearly all of them come with little tabs at the bottom for positioning the heads uh, but I just cut all those off so I can so I position the head exactly how I like uh, but just be aware that you know the <laughs> you also with that freedom could become comes great responsibility uh, and you know you have to make sure that you pose the model correctly because you could stick the head in the, a wrong position if you like. Um, there's obviously a mold line here on the head going all the way along the hair. The This is another one of these problems the same as the kind of like the ribbing on the tubes that I talked about before um, and I strongly suggest that when taking off this mold line concentrate mostly on getting rid of the mold line. What you'll find is as you're scraping it off you'll probably take away some of the hair uh, and it'll be left more like a smooth surface but don't worry about that because again you can paint these details in what you can also find as well is because there's plenty of hair still left you can follow the line when you paint the you know strands in and you can go over the top and it'll just line up so you know you can still uh, do it fairly easily um, so now we're coming up to the part where I'm going to be uh, converting the model and this can be quite scary, especially you know with the cost of the models. They're not cheap to mess around with. That. So if you go wrong, um, it can be quite heartbreaking. Uh, what you notice first is obviously I'm still cleaning off the mold lines on it. Uh, I don't want the gun on the hand, uh, and I'm going to be cutting that off. However, it's easier to clean up the mold lines because you've got the gun to hold on to. So you do that first, and then you cut the gun off afterwards. And you can see again here just using the scalpel just to get into the little crevices and I can't stress enough it's a very delicate touch don't push hard you can almost have the weight of the the blade uh, and the handle you know if you just let it rest on it and drag it that's probably heavy like enough of uh, a force against it to uh, drag the along the model to keep, take these uh, mold lines off they're not very strong you know it's just like very gentle and that they'll rub away so here's where you have to take your uh, um, you know build up your courage ready to uh, chop off the hand the so you can see here I was very very close to the gun um, that because I'm not using the gun in it in this uh, conversion I'm not bothered too much uh, about you know damaging the gun I just want to make sure I get as much of the forearm and the wrist as possible so I want to try and get all those little creases around it um, and you're going to see so I'm sure a few people will be like screaming at their monitors I'm not buying a whole model just to use the hand um, and I could completely understand that uh, I've bought both of these models to paint so I, at some point I will do the Chaos Sorcerer um, and you know I have the intention I always have the intention of building armies so I have got an army in boxes of uh, Black Legion 
uh, care space marines and uh, this will be one of them um, but in this case when I uh, come to build him I will convert him as well I might even use the plasma gun from Mephisto so you know uh, it kind of like evens out again but uh, you find as well with uh, the care space marine boxes there'll be loads of hands and weapons that you can swap over to replace uh, what you've taken away so um, really I don't see it as too much as of a negative so I, like I didn't buy the model specifically for this conversion but um, I did think it would be a cool conversion to make uh, yes you know so so don't worry if you don't want to spend I, I'm not sure how much it is 15 or 20 pounds or whatever it is for a, for a model just to get a tiny little hand off of it um, I will say when you're cleaning up the mold lines on the hand on the fingers especially uh, it's very tricky to hold this um, it probably would be better uh, to clean it up after you glue it on. So what you're going to see here is I'm going to glue the fingers onto the hands. It's a two-part piece. I'm not entirely sure why, but I guess because the fingers are spread out so you can get that kind of like nicely spaced sort of dynamic movement. Um, it was easier to do it as a two-part piece, but it obviously just makes it harder to um, work with the, uh, the model because it's such a small piece to clean up. Um, but so you saw there as well, so I put some Tamiya glue on rather than the other glue. You might be wondering, why well, you haven't used any of the other glue yet. Why why do you need that? We well, can just use the Tamiya. Uh, but you'll see that in uh, a few moments. Uh, but for this, like, so you want to kind of push it in so that the um, some of the melted plastic even comes out around the gaps so that when you tidy it up, it, um, you know, you can scrape that off and you get a very smooth finish. Uh, but so like I said, like it'd probably be easier if you just uh, glue the fingers on, wait for it to dry, and then use the scalpel on it to, to clean up the fingers because it is very like they are very small pieces to hold and scrape off the, the mold lines at the same time. So here again, uh, we're going to be cutting off the hand, same process as before, except it's kind of like in reverse. You want as much of the hand as possible, um, whereas you're not bothered about the forearm and the wrist. Uh, but you do want a little bit of wrist in there. Um, one thing you'll notice here as I've cut it, so that it's kind of like a, you know, along the edge all the way around, um, it's kind of raised. You need to go now with your scalpel and cut all that raised section off. Uh, don't go too crazy. Uh, you'll probably find as well there's a little bit of the detail from the, the Chaos Sorcerer arm on there, so I think it's like a, a, like a Chaos Arrow coming through. But... Um, you know, just take your time on this. Like it, it is the, the most important part of the conversion. So if uh, you cut this in half and mess it up and you know chop off the fingers or something, then you, you've kind of like wasted uh, the whole process. Uh, but kind of like the same uh, principle still applies. Like so, it's very hard to hold. It's a small hand. Um, try and just cut it so you get a, a smooth, flat surface for when you apply it to the the arm section. Um, if you can't hold it well enough to clip, you know, to cut down the these little raised edges, uh, you can do that when you glue it on. But what you're going to find is, let's so say you'll see in the video in a moment when I glue the hand to the arm, um, because I've done it like this when I apply it, it's going to be a very smooth fit, uh, and I don't actually have to use any green stuff or anything to fill in the gap. Um, so you know, it just depends. Like if you know whatever you find it is easier for you, but but in this case, uh, like I, I prefer to you know cut off all the the excess detail. So now you just want to do a quick dry fit to make sure that it uh, sort of lines up with what you want. Um, so you might think at this stage, oh well, that's not going to work. <laughs> Look at those gaps all the way around; it doesn't fit at all. But what you'll find is when you put the glue on and then you sort of smush the uh, parts together, it kind of like pushes into the gap. And smooths around. So here you can see now I'm using the the Revel glue. So um, so here you can you see how much thicker it is. Um, just be aware when you use that this glue, it takes longer to dry. The Tamiya glue, the uh, extra thin, dries very quickly, whereas this uh, is uh, much slower to do. So it does give you a little bit of working time. Um, I mean, you get like working time with the Tamiya, but like we're talking 
you know 20 seconds or something to to work with it whereas this you've got a, a long time you know talking minutes or uh, to move it around but they can see you know just pushing it together there's uh, you know hardly any kind of gap or fault in in the connection and if you want if there is like any it still doesn't quite fit right then just take some of the revel glue and run it around the gap leave it to dry and then you can kind of smooth it down again with the, the scalpel like we did with the, the other details so now we're going to build the model uh, this is pretty straightforward really uh, a lot of this is going to be the revel glue and you'll see why <laughs> hopefully you do a better job than i did there um, I do find a lot of the pieces on these models are quite small and fiddly, uh, even for me. So I've had probably 30 years experience uh, painting and building uh, Warhammer models. So, um, you know, unless you have kind of like tiny little childlike fingers, um, a lot of these things are uh, just quite fiddly to hold. I, I'd probably recommend getting some uh, jewellery uh, tweezers uh, just to... You know, uh, hold a lot of the models and position parts when you stick them together. It just gives you a bit more dexterity on the the very fine uh, pieces because they're just so hard to hold. And you know, the, some of the spaces are so small you can't even get your fingers into them to um, make pieces line up properly. So there you could see that I, when I put that section in, I also sort of flooded the area with glue because there's actually quite a strong uh, kind of like large gap at the very top, but because I've melted all the plastic with the glue when I pushed it in it actually ended up just smoothing out um, I know it's quite hard to see in the video because uh, wherever I put the glue you get this very shiny surface and it stays like that as it dries and you kind of think oh it's melted uh, there is a, a kind of like a surface level of melting going on but when you get the primer on which I'll show you at the very very end just in case anyone's worrying that I've ruined some of the details um, you'll see that actually um, it was all very superficial and uh, adding the primer just makes all that disappear. So here's something uh, as well. So this, what I'm doing is cutting off the uh, the glove of his left arm and the reason for this is the glove comes in two parts so uh, you've, if you have the model you probably will have noticed that you have the separate sword and the hand going around it but then the glove on that is in half and then the other half of the glove is on the model. Now I want to be able to separate the model up um, into components uh, for painting, so for ease of access and things like that. Uh, you can see that I used a scalpel when I cut that off. The reason I didn't use like a saw, like with the teeth on it, is because if, every time you use a saw, uh, you actually cut away some of the uh, material. I want because it's a very fine uh, area. I don't just want to lose any detail, so I used a scalpel. I was just very careful and just took my time sawing backwards and forwards. Uh, you will lose hardly any material doing it like that but because there's no teeth it take, it's a little bit more work but now I can then glue that section that I cut off onto the lower hand um, you know spend a bit of time pushing it together same exactly the same process as you just saw uh, with the, the small section on the skirt um, try and you know push it together so you squeeze some of the the now melted plastic in between the the gap, so it kind of forces out. Uh, if you see, so if you can see the the little joint, there's a little bit that where it didn't quite squeeze out. Just put a bit of the uh, the thicker glue on, so that it doesn't work when you use the uh, Tamiya extra thin. That will just kind of run into all the recesses. But for the thicker glue, it will actually dry as a blob. Um, it's almost kind of like adding plastic to it. So you, you just leave it to dry then, uh, and when it's dried, you can just cut it back. So now we're just going to uh, stick in some of the uh, the other parts. It's very simple and straightforward. I say that as I try to glue the leg on backwards. Um, <laughs> but you'll notice that I keep swapping in between uh, the Tamiya glue and the Revel glue. And the reason for that is I prefer to use the Tamiya when I can because it dries so much quicker so I don't have to worry about knocking parts of the model off again while I'm waiting, you know, while I'm moving on to other parts to stick them together. Um, and then when I get to the Revel stuff, it's because I want to use it as a filler. Now here you can see where I've made a mistake when building the model. Uh, if you look at the foot, I already glued that onto the, the back part of the skirt. And um, now there's a massive gap going down the side because uh, there's a little hit, uh, hook at the bottom of the front part of the skirt. And it doesn't fit in 
the foot is supposed to be slightly more to the you know towards the right hand side and there would be a gap for that to fit in so I've now had to cut down that section and uh, there you can see that's how it's supposed to fit uh, originally um, but you know so the foot is now slightly different for its position but uh, it's not going to be a big issue really uh, now I go and you can see uh, this is a, a really nice tip so I'm using the Rebel I'm really really overloading those edges you can see there's way more glue than you would need to hold this but when I apply the, uh, the back part of the model to the front then you put a little bit of pressure don't you know don't go crazy trying to put all your body weight behind it or something you only need to push uh, a little bit just to kind of squeeze it together try and force um, some of the like the glue and the melted plastic to come up uh, through this uh, and leave like, kind of like a raised bump if it doesn't do it and you can see there's still some uh, indentations just go back with the glue and do a thin line all the way over the top of it um, I'm going to do that on both sides just to be on the safe side uh, just be aware if you do something like this with a thicker glue if you go anywhere near any fine detail uh, it will kind of destroy it because the glue doesn't shrink when uh, it dries the, the Tami glue kind of evaporates whereas the Revel glue just leaves a blob um, if you've got too much glue on and you want to smooth it down you can use some of the Tami glue to smooth uh, the Revel glue and it kind of like you know uh, dilutes it and uh, smooths it away but here you can see uh, the benefit now I just go back um, with the uh, scalpel and it's kind of like um, you're scraping away a mold line again so I mean you might have to go push a little bit harder because it the uh, the raised glue that you put on there is a bit thicker than a mold line but and always scrape away from yourself. Uh, don't do it towards you. You're gonna. It'll. You're more likely to cut into the model, and make a mess. Um, but just you know, take your time. Gentle pressure, uh, and you know, just keep scraping away the surface until it all looks smooth. Um, also, what you find is with um, you know if you do this too much you're going to get kind of like a little wavy lines built up uh, don't worry about that if you've got a bit of sandpaper you can smooth it down uh, you see here actually I, I use a little bit of sandpaper just to smooth it off um, finer is better don't use like you know something with really big chunky grit on you'll leave gouges in the model um, but there's no like some people, you know, they go get a bit of obsessive when they uh, start sanding things down, and they go to kind of like a perfectly smooth, like really high grain finish. Um, you know, by the time you put the the primer on, you can't really see these things. It doesn't make any difference. So don't worry too much about that. Just make sure that you get like it. What if you run your finger over it and it feels smooth? It's probably good enough. Um, he, you can see, oh, and and. One thing really important actually before you scrape off the glue you have to leave it quite a long time I'd recommend leaving it overnight now you might touch it and think oh it, it feels dry but it still is quite rubbery you need it to set hard before you scrape it off if you start scraping it off before it's dry it's going to um, kind of peel and like I say it's got that kind of rubbery feel to it uh, it won't scrape cleanly you won't be able to sand it you just end up making a mess um, the reason that I did that before I uh, put the skirt, like the cloak on, sorry, is obviously so that I had much better access to it. But I am, I did glue the uh, the cloak on. Uh, when I'm building these models with the intention of doing like a high level paint job, um, I try to build the model as much as I possibly can, um, and just leave off parts that. Uh, you know will make my life easier when it comes around to it don't just automatically leave things off and do it in as few pieces as possible I'm always looking um, for sections that will be a lot of work to try and fix if you uh, once you've stuck it together they'll need um, th there'll be gaps so for example here you can see where the cloak uh, meets the body there was a really large gap there and to fix that uh, once you've painted the cloak 
is going to be a big pain in the backside, especially if you've spent a lot of time freehanding the cloak like I'm going to. Um, you know, loads and loads of work to fix that and you risk damaging the paint that you've already done. Uh, so I find that as long as I can still access most of the, the model after putting the cloak on, then it's worth gluing on. Um, uh, so here you can see to fix that, I'm actually using green stuff for this. So uh, it's a, because it's such a big gap, I didn't want to risk putting a lot of glue on there uh, because you don't have as much control. And this obviously, it takes a few hours to dry. So you can spend your time, you know, keep prodding it and pushing it around until you get something that you think uh, looks pretty good. So uh, I'm using Vallejo uh, model putty. It's, it's all the same, really, blue and yellow two-part uh, um, mixing putty stuff. <laughs> I'll put the description in the video. Um, you mix it together. like So it, it should be 50-50 roughly when you mix it. If you add more of the blue, it's going to be a little bit stiffer. And if you add more of the yellow, it's going to be softer and easier to mould. Uh, but the downside to that is it's a, a lot easier to accidentally knock it and you know make it uh, like do accidental damage to it and things. Um, so you know, I tend to go pretty much 50-50. Um, but then again, I'm like a, I'm not a very good sculptor anyway. So um, you know, it's just very pretty basic stuff. Uh, also, what you find is uh, again, you have to leave this to dry, leave it overnight. I'd suggest so that when you come back, it's hard enough. Um, so if you need to sand it down, you can see on the uh, the cloak quote on that little connecting bit it wasn't perfectly smooth uh, so if you need to sand it down then you, you still can so uh, on this model I wanted to do a little bit of um, a little bit of more dyna dynamic kind of movement to the hair because if you look at the, the whole model it's got all these fantastic movement his cloaks billowing in the wind his skirt the, um, the little blood uh, syringes that he has uh, it's all blowing in one direction in the wind and then his hair is quite sort of stiff um, I guess he uses a lot of gel or something <laughs> but uh, regardless I just wanted to get a little bit of extra movement into his hair so I'm doing kind of like a strand that's kind of blowing uh, like freely now I, I'm i sure quite a few people find this as well um, I find green stuff can be quite frustrating in that it sticks to your fingers way easier than it sticks to uh, the plastic model. Um, there are lots of things you can uh, do to kind of remove the stickiness. So it's going to still stick to the uh, the tools that you're using as well, uh, all sorts of things like that. Um, and the biggest advice I can give for doing this is just to take your time. Now, there's a lot of people that can sculpt a lot better than I can. So, if, you know, you want to get like a, an in-depth video, um, you're probably better off going to uh, find someone else that's actually like a, a proper sculptor. I'm ju I just do kind of like very simple little uh, conversions and things when I use green stuff. But, um, you know, just for, for a small little conversion like this, for adding a bit of hair and filling gaps and things, uh, I think this will do the job. Uh, one thing I do find is um, for hair as well you just kind of like want to tease it out kind of stretch it a little bit once you can get the shapes in so you've got you can see I've got some strands in there now and they need to sort of match the the thickness of the strands that are already on the model um, you know you just kind of keep teasing them out it kind of like stretches it and gets a bit more of that taper on uh, once you actually got the the shape and the movement onto the model um, I'd actually recommend leaving it to dry then you can kind of tidy it up come back and then clean so you can see here I've got the, these little edges and things um, you can go back and you can cut those off afterwards trying to clean it off now when it's just mixed and you know still very pliable you're going to run into issues um, and you're probably going to damage the work that you've already done uh, but, and also don't forget, so here I am, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to make sure that the the green stuff on the model now blends into the, the hair that's already there. It's quite important that. Because, um, you know, you don't want it to stand out like a sore thumb that you've got you know this extra sculpted section on. It looks to 
needs to look like it's a natural part of the model. Um, and one other thing, and this is quite important as well because you will uh, run into issues <laughs> with this, uh, the head isn't glued in. So you saw before where I said I cut off the tab so I can position the head how I want, but I, um, because I'm going to do like a high level paint job on the head, uh, I, I need the head to be able to be removed from the mo model. Um, make sure that when you finish sculpting the green stuff isn't touching any other part of the model so you can see here as I finished I just pushed it around a bit so it's sort of not touching the uh, the collar um, because when it dries it works very much like glue and will stick hard to those uh, those things and then you'll kind of you know you've already stuck the head in basically um, so here's the, the conversion finished with uh, you know all the model lines taken off and things like that. If you see any white on there, that's obviously uh, white blue stuff, uh, blue tack, sorry. <laughs> um, and you know that'll come off, but that's just so that you know you can see I can see the model all stuck together uh, and how it's all going to look. Um, I mean I know that it looks like there's slightly messy parts here and there but again I'm just going to show you in a moment uh, just after this is finished doing its rotation what it all looks like when I put the primer on because a lot of the in a lot of the cases um, the light catches things especially anywhere that's had glue on it it looks very shiny and kind of like shows up um, what look like imperfections but here you can see now uh, once I've got the primer on and you know everything now looks very smooth and clean. Um, so this is going to be pretty simple to uh, to get started on. But anyway, so that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're interested, I'm going to be painting the whole model for this process on my Patreon, so you'll be able to check that out. I'll put the link uh, in the description as well. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found some of this uh, useful, and there'll be plenty more videos to come.